The word interesting is how I would best describe the T-95E6. It's an extremely mobile heavy tank that has decent armor, a very solid gun, but it's also got a lot of downsides, like incredibly weak side armor, its hull is also very bad for a tier 10 heavy, its turret has a huge tumor on the roof that we'll name Bob for today's video, and yeah, that can cause a lot of problems. So this is a great tank in certain situations, but absolutely horrendous in others. And I played a battle on Winter Mali about five minutes ago where I learned just how bad this tank can be in certain situations. I pushed very aggressive to the windmill. I had a couple tanks overlooking me, but that doesn't stop the enemy from taking advantage. This tank is very good in a hull down position. That's what its main playstyle is. The downside is that if the enemy is able to dig it out of that position, you're basically useless. And that's kind of what happened to me last battle, is that I played it very aggressive and the enemy just drove right over the hill, and that was the end of me. So, uh, yeah, you can lose a lot of games because of the very frail nature of this tank. We still won that battle because, thankfully, my team was able to take advantage of their team doing that, but you can still very quickly be taken out. Now, the Object 140 is crossing, and look at that. Very easy snap onto the side of his tank for 400 damage. Now, even though spawning on the other side of the map is actually better for getting in the position, you can see that I took advantage of this spot, and now we are hauled down. Oh boy, this 140 is crying, gotta love that. Uh, I'm just gonna sit here, we'll see what the enemy does. I'm gonna try and get a shell into this 140. Boop, nice tap, another 400 roll, which is fine with me. We were able to deal 400 twice, which is our average. Imagine if you rolled average every single shell. That'd be really, really interesting. Either way, we got the uh, T-57 Heavy over here. Nice tap right into his tank, but look at that. We got slapped right in that hatch. I don't even know if that guy was aiming at my hatch, but it ended up hitting me there, and yeah, you can see where the armor on this tank can fall very short. Thankfully, we've been able to use the pretty decent damage per minute combined with the nice alpha on this vehicle to get some shells into our opponent. You can see, though, another shell going right into my lower plate. Whenever this vehicle's hull is exposed, you can almost bet that it's going to end up penetrating your tank. That's something you gotta be very, very careful of. Although, you did notice one thing that I actually do quite often notice happening with this tank is that it actually gets bounces right on the track. It's, it's weird, but, like, if you shoot the track wheel because it extends a little bit over the hull, sometimes you won't actually penetrate the vehicle. But either way, there you go. Nice shot into the uh, mill, too. We max rolled it and with that we're doing pretty decent this game as you can see another pen right into my vehicle though the armor just does not work super well on this tank when you expose it so you got to be careful about that thankfully because you are a heavy you have a lot of hit points to work with 2400 so that's pretty good news now the enemy team has a t100 lt and they have a chieftain mark six we already know where the chieftain is and judging that i have not seen that player all game I'm going for that Mark VI. That's going to be some free damage for me to farm. So here we go, Speech. You can see the mobility on this tank is very solid. Never really goes slower than its top speed of 42, which is great. It means that you can always get into position very quickly. You saw me do that at the beginning of this game. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to try and penetrate the side of this Mark VI, which I did with a high explosive shell. That is amazing. And there you go. That first battle showcased really all the strengths and weaknesses that I would say about this tank. Its armor is really bad. Like, the hull is terrible. Unless you're using it hull down, you're not going to bounce anything apart from people not aiming in their shells. The side is terrible, but there is a tricky spot that you can bounce on the track wheel. And when it comes to the roof, it's very solid apart from that hatch. Now, there is a nice thing about the hatch on this tank, and it's the fact that if you wiggle it correctly it can get a lot of bounces. Only the center of the hatch is a very big weak spot. If you're actually aiming at the edges of it, you will bounce off of it very commonly. Now, to be honest, I still wish this tank just had no hatch, and you could say, well, the tank could be too strong. I mean, we already have the Concept 1B, and the concept is literally this tank, but faster, with better accuracy, better DPM, and it's got no hatch. I, I mean... <laughs> This tank really shouldn't have a hatch, or at least a much, much smaller hatch. I just, I don't understand why you should limit a tank 
by giving it a hatch or something. Like, make make its armor weaker on the turret or something. Don't give it a, a massive weak spot that negates all the hull down capabilities against a pretty decent player. So what does the enemy team have? Now, my team, you'll notice, is pushing over towards C. I don't love going to C. Base B, like right near base B up on that hill hull down is where I love to go. But it seems like my team doesn't want to do that. In fact, they're doing a four-way split. Well, it's kind of like a four-way split. Unfortunately, I can't really say that because there's seven people on a team, but I want to get a shell into this 2 and 5B. The E50M, I mean, well, he's giving me the free shot, so I might as well take advantage of it, but the E50M, whenever you see somebody making that maneuver, you probably know that they're not great at the game. I mean, that guy is basically signing a death warrant for himself, uh, but when it comes to players like that 2 and 5B, that guy, because he's playing as heavy towards the heavy side, he probably knows at least a little bit more. So I'm going to push up towards base C. Now, obviously, I don't know where everybody on the enemy team is, but I do know that two of their medium tanks have been spotted off to the other side. So hopefully I'm going to get past this yo. Here we go. Squeeze my way through. And now I'm going to try and aim in a shell on the enemy FV 2 and 5B. Very easy shot into the side armor. That's the real downside of the 2 and 5B is it just has no side scraping capability. At an angle like this, he's at easy pen right through, as you can see. Imagine if it didn't pen, I would have looked like a monkey, but it did. So we easily pen the 2 and 5B. And then because we, we have adrenaline on, we can pen him again back on the cover. We max roll that, which means we still rolled 400 with our shell. I mean, it's just, that's the issue with the Toon 5B, is its armor does not work. It, like, look at that, right through the upper plate, even though it looked a little red, it just didn't bounce. So there you go, uh, my teammates are going to finish him off, and with that, I'm going to start aiming in on the Yo off to the side. Easy pen right into the Yo's lower plate, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep on pushing up. Even if this Yo tunnels me, that is completely up to him at this point. I'm just going to get one shell into the side, a boop, and now we're going to get some shells into the Hori. I mean, you can see where the mobility on this tank is very nice. The gun does a pretty solid job. We're going to aim in on this Hori, tap him right. Oh, wow, I got robbed. I got absolutely robbed. I hate the Hori. I really do. The armor on the Hori it makes no sense. It is definitely one of the most stupid tanks in tier 10. Thankfully, our heat shells will butter all the way through his tank. So, not really worried about that. This enemy AMX 50B is going to give me a free HE onto his side. There you go. Nice tap for 508. And uh, the only way we'd be finished off by this AMX 50B is if he high rolled me. But I'm not really worried about that. We're going to aim in another HE shell into his side, another 484 damage. Look at that, we're doing pretty good. But again, you can see the armor. I mean, we got buttered even on the engine deck. I mean, it's it's just not great on the armor. If you ever want to get your hands on the E6, you need to not expose the hull. I've seen so many players use it in so many bad situations. But there you go, another 4,000 damage game. We were able to do our job and come out with a pretty solid victory, even pulling out a first class. So not a bad game. I would very easily relate this to a Chieftain Mark VI. The only issue is that this tank's armor on the hull is way worse than the Mark VI. Its gun is way worse on accuracy, damage per minute. It's worse on its shell velocity. The only real advantage this tank has over the Mark VI is its penetration. And if we compare this to the Concept 1B, the Concept is lower down, it's got a smaller turret, no weak spots on the turret, it's got more gun depression, or actually, is it the same gun depression this tank has? 10, okay. So it's the same gun depression, but this gun's more accurate, basically the same DPM. It's just, the E6, it's not a bad vehicle, but it's an interesting tank. I would not suggest for you to spend your money on the E6 as it's in stores for 17500 Every Blitz Fair, it comes out for way cheaper, and even then, it's still not a ridiculously strong vehicle. If you're decent at the game and you understand how to use a vehicle like this, it's not a bad shout. But for most of you, I really wouldn't suggest to drive it. Hopefully, all of you enjoyed today's video, and if you'd like to see more like it, let me know what you guys want to see in the future. But other than that, I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.